I cut a bunch of cleats all at once and I've already beveled the edges on this one. I'll show you how I do that here in a second. I've marked off five locations evenly spaced down through there. Just for the record, these cleats in this case are about 53 thousandths of an inch thick. You know, it's over a millimeter. I think a millimeter is roughly 40 thousandths. Uh, so I'll give you some idea. It's a little more than a millimeter. I guess you'd say one and a quarter millimeters is about what that amounts to. Now we're going to glue these in place. It's very tempting to use uh, super glue because it would be fast and you know I'm really torn almost to use it but I think I'm going to go ahead and just use the old faithful tight bond. Um, I really you know if we're going to put them in here and we want it to really hold I've got more faith in this for really holding and uh, not turning loose. This takes a little more work than the super glue for sure, but it's also really good and solid and I don't have to worry about it. And for the record, that's what she looks like all clamped up. Uh, five cleats across there. And just for grins, um, these cleats are 363 thousandths wide and Fifth, 566 thousandths long so they're a little over a half inch long and uh, you know anyway you can make them almost any size there's no absolute standard I just try to find something dainty small you know that's not going to be real bulky and big I believe that's going to make that uh, joint really really strong it would take a lot to pull that apart now we've got some uh, separation in places on some of the wood so I'm taking glue, putting it in here, and going to glue all that down. I think we've got all the little fibers glued back down. And so now we'll just give it some time and we're ready to put the lid back on this box. Done a lot of inspecting, looking it over, making sure that it's good. And I believe it's good. So. We're going to put her back together and see how it looks after it's together. The only thing I even sort of see that's a little bit off is this one point right here doesn't, doesn't line up real good. And that could just be that this piece is knocked off. Uh, there, we may have to add a little tiny piece on here later just to make that match. But other than that, it looks like everything lines up good. Um, I'm pretty darn happy with the way this is turning out so far. You really can't clamp anything like this too much. It just makes it a better joint. And so go to town with your clamps. Get plenty of clamping on there. You don't have to squeeze them crazy tight, but you got to get plenty of them on there. All right, now I'm going to do some detail cleanup around here with a brush and some water and stuff. I was almost ready to put the neck on this, and uh, I've got it stuck in there, and it, it fits in the joint pretty tightly, which is kind of nice. I, I was just checking it for height because the thing about this is you don't want to get this too high or too low. You want to get it pretty close to right. And I always set it about seven eighths of an inch. Right now this is a full one inch and maybe even a hair bigger than that. I'm afraid that's going to be just a little bit too high. Now the problem with that is I have to do something to bring it down. now. I'm not really sure what that something's going to be. If I have to trim a little bit off of this joint here somewhere. Neck joint's not lining up perfectly anyway, so I need to work on it a little bit. And when I work on it, I think I can bring this down just a little bit. Just a little tweaking is all I did, and I brought it down nearly a full eighth of an inch. It's a, well, it's really just about a full eighth of an inch lower, so it's right at seven eighths of an inch. Uh, millimeter wise, that's uh 
2.3 centimeters so that'd be uh, 23 millimeters I guess it is anyway it's pretty pretty good well I'm happy with the joint fit so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put her together We'll let that set a few hours and then we'll come back and get the fingerboard on it. Off camera, I spent a lot of time on this tailpiece here, or this, oh, I can't even think what you call it now, but this end piece that the loop goes over to hold the tailpiece on. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time making that fit really good. You want it to fit nice and snug, but you don't really want it tight across this direction. If, it, if it's tight this way, it's going to crack your wood. So I just want it where it looks like it's tight, but it's not. And that's the way it is right now. I think I'm ready to glue it in there. I'm just trying to clean it off and make sure it's good and clean before I glue it in there. Get rid of the old junk and stuff that was there. After all these years I finally broke down and got me a good peg shaver. I had made one years ago and it worked okay sort of but I preferred to use my wood lathe. I can cut them pretty darn fast on my wood lathe and make them very accurate. Anyway I spent a lot of time making sure that this thing would cut the taper that this does. In other words, I, you know, this is going to shave at a certain angle and I wanted it to be that same angle that this reamer is working at. And I think I had success here on my first peg. I uh, took a little bit of extra time and just this peg was way oversized and I uh, just took a lot of time with it and I feel real comfortable with the way this is working at the moment. This one hole here was way oversized compared to the rest of them. These pegs, I didn't even need to shave them down at all. The D-string hole was much bigger than the rest of these holes for whatever reason. And so it took a much bigger peg. So I had to put a larger peg in this one. The rest of these are just standard pegs and they fit in pretty good and I mitch mix matched them around till I got them fitting pretty good. This one here is a little loosey-goosey so I'm going to see what I can do about reaming that hole a little bit. They all, Otherwise they feel like they fit pretty good. Whenever you get a peg that's not fitting good on both sides then you just need to take your reamer and just lightly ream it and I mean lightly ream it till you just get both holes working. Because you know you can these holes get too big way too fast. So there's a light amount of reaming there. And it mostly took it off on the other side. And I think it's gonna work, but that peg is getting on the edge of being too small, actually. We're gonna stop right there. It feels solid now though, which is what it needed. And we're gonna cut those pegs off and make them work. The finish on this old violin is just kind of messed up. Here I wiped on a little bit of linseed oil to see what it looked like and it still, you know, show it looks better but it shows those white lines a lot. You know, it's it's hard to see. you can see all these white lines that have just kind of popped off the finish uh, from getting wet, I think is what I think it is. So I'm going to try and experiment here. I took just a little bit of leather dye, a few drops, so maybe 10 or 15 drops and then I filled that cup half full of denatured alcohol which uh, dissolves that dye so this is a very weak dye and I'm just going to rub over this whole thing and see if we can't darken in those lines see what that does for it that's looking pretty good actually it may be even a little bit too weak it's pretty bad the way it is so I just think this might help it on the looks and then we can after this dries then we can wipe on the linseed oil
Well, now there's a decent looking fiddle now compared to where we were. <laughs> can you even see the mouse hole? Sure you can, but it's not very obvious. It's, it depends on what light you get it in. So, uh, that's pretty nice. I think that's going to go away some once I uh, put the finish on there too. I think I probably need to even sand that lightly a little bit. It's still not just the way I want it. It's a little bit rough. I scraped it smooth, but it's since I put the fin or the uh, dye on there, it seems to have roughened up a little bit. Okay, now we will just take a dry towel and wipe her down real good. Um, the object is not to put a finish over it, it's just to clean up the finish. Well, you'd be hard pressed to get one in a better shape than this one's in, in six or seven hours, considering the way it came in the shop. <laughs> and that's all we've got in, it's about seven hours. So, man, that's pretty nice. I can't wait to string this puppy up tomorrow and give her a little play. I'm going to go ahead and fit up most of the components to this fiddle because, uh, you know, I want to be ready to string it up tomorrow and get her going. And uh, this stuff I can do today, even though I'm not going to actually string it yet this evening. These bridges come in rough and the feet are much too thick. Maybe you can see the difference in the thickness. This one I've cut down. This one has not been cut down. You can see the difference. Now, this one's still thick in my opinion. I'm, I'm just going to leave it that thick until I match it to the top a little better. I've already checked it. It matches pretty close in the shape that it's in. I measure this in millimeters, so for my friends out there in millimeter land, I go to 300 and, generally speaking, about 325, I believe it is. That's pretty close. It's in that ballpark area right there. So approximately 325 millimeters. Now I take a pencil, just a regular old pencil with a very sharp point, and I lay it flat on the uh, fingerboard and I use that as my, and I, and I kind of rock it so it goes high here in the middle, like that, and then I follow the terrain of the fingerboard on this side. That way you get a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a flat slope across here, and then it drops off a little bit on the G string. And I just use that as a ballpark. That just gives me a ballpark. I leave that pencil mark and just kind of cut the bridge to that rough shape. So that's what I'm going to do now. You can see that just gives me a ballpark there. You can still see the pencil marks. And uh, you can see the rough shape of the bridge. And it's just rough at, at this point uh, without putting the strings on it and everything. But I just want to get it close and that'll get me close. The bridge is far too thick. I call it a 2x4 at this point. It's just blocky and thick and it wouldn't vibrate well. So what you have to do then is you cut it way down. You could sand it down. I just typically cut it down with my little finger planes because I'm used to using those. These things are just, you know, perfect for this for, in my opinion. The only negative of using finger plane uh, is that you can break this little, these little parts off. So you got to be careful about that as you go across those and know how to go across those little parts. If your plane is really sharp, like this one, it cuts them pretty good. And it's really fast. It doesn't take long at all to, to thin it down. Might seem like it takes a while, but it doesn't. It just It's pretty darn fast. I'm just working, on, for the most part, working on this one side to show you the difference, maybe. 
That's not how I normally do it. I normally keep it fairly even across there, but for this demonstration, I'll show you that I'm cutting it way thin. You know, all of this wood here has just come off of that, off of that <coughs> bridge. So you can see I cut a lot off. And if you do this well, it'll look good and flat and smooth too when you're done, and it won't look real chopped up. You can, I did cut a little off this edge over here before I thought about this. So this is actually a hair thinner than it used to be, but you can see how much thinner this is than that. So, and even this has already been thin a little bit by like at least one cut. Yeah, we take down quite a bit of it. Now that looks pretty good there. That's pretty thin very light. We'll find out tomorrow then, you know, if we've got it just right, we can always fine tune it some more. But I believe it's going to be pretty close. Now I'm going to try to make a sound post for this. Uh, the thing about the sound post is, I'm not sure, I, I may still have to cut these a little bit bigger. I, you know, I left it pretty small. I wanted it to be dainty. I don't want it to look big and ugly and clunky. So it's, it's fine right now. It could just be on the air, uh, the edge of too small for a sound post though. So I made a nice little sound post out of some Adirondack spruce. Got my thumb a little too close to the sander there um, while I was doing that some work. That's just par for the course around here. This little tool slides up and down and you can put it inside here and measure the length of your sound post. And it's pretty darn accurate. It's, it's a pretty neat little tool. You just lock it down right here to get this the right length. Then you make your sound post to that length. And I always leave it just a tiny bit long. Then the other thing you do is you look at your ingrain on here and you want your ingrain running perpendicular to your top. What I do then is I take a little tiny bevel on each of those ingrains so that it'll match the bottom and the top bevel of the, the top. The, the top is a little arch like that and the bottom is a little arch so you take a little bit off each of those when you pull it in there it'll get it'll fit right in there real nice and snug. I go down about a third of the way down the post is approximately how far I go. I've got a little tiny 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 hook drill uh, bent on the end of this wire and anyway that's what it looks like. I doubt it's gonna focus on that but there's a little tiny hook you might be able to see there so you basically you drill that into this and that little hook after you screw it in there it'll hold it should hold it well enough that you should be able to set this in place now typically I don't do this till I get string pressure on here I'm just gonna see if I can demonstrate it right now first thing I, you know I have to get the bridge approximately where I want it though now, I don't expect that bridge to completely stay there, but that'll give me an eyeball bar ballpark of where I want this. That's what the hook is for on the other side, is you can move it around a little bit. And sometimes you pull it wrong and it falls out. So, that looks really good right there. So, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. And then tomorrow we'll put the strings on it and go from there. Thought I'd just show you one more thing before I turn it in for the evening. Putting this on, these little tail loops, there's a screw on here. These are threaded on the end. You leave the one on, you come in from the inside like this, push it all the way down to that one, bend it back around, go back through like so. Pretty far in there this time pull it up and you put the other threaded nut on there, little knurl, whatever you want to call this thing, knurled nut. You check your loop here and you bend it, you pull your loop up in there and you bend it so that you want it to go past your little end block here that way, you know, eighth of an inch maybe, something like that. That looks pretty good right about where I got it, so. I like to make them symmetrical, so I'm going to loosen this side. 
And it really looks pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do now is just cut off this extra. You just reach down in there with a pair of cutters. And oh, I usually leave just two or three threads showing on the end. Like that. So that ought to be pretty good right there. Now we can't do anything else, I don't think, until tomorrow. Well, Murphy's Law has raised its ugly head. If you can see here, I knew this was there and I tried to glue it. I thought maybe it would hold, but I knew better. There's a little crack or crust right there. I don't know how well that's showing up in the camera. I think you can see it there. And that little crack is, uh, you know, going to get worse and not hold the peg good and all that. So I'm going to go from the inside, put a big patch in there and uh, glue across it because there's nothing you can do to get that to stay because anytime you drive in this wedge in there, it's just going to open that up. There, you can't glue it and make it hold. you got to put a patch across or something. So that's what I'm going to do. Just when you think you're almost done, you got more work to do. So in order to fix this, what I've done is I've sharpened up this small chisel very sharp. I'm basically going to go in here and cut away at least half the thickness of this in an area that's going to span that crack on both sides. It actually, the crack I think actually goes through down into here a little bit too. We're going to span this whole area on the inside where you won't really see it. But you got to cut away quite a bit of it, uh, material in order to put a good patch in there. Now I'll start to trying to make a piece that will fit that and fit it as close to a glove-like fit as I can get. That's, that's the hard part on something like this because it's an odd shape. I did 99% of this off camera. It's very difficult fitting. I made a piece first that turned out to be too small but it had some of the correct shape so I could use that as a pattern and then make this bigger one. And the bigger one fits really, really good. There's a little bit of a gap at the very top up here where I got a little bit too much off of the edge, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Everything else fits up really tight, and uh, around the hole especially, it's really tight. The grain's going the opposite way. It's a real thick patch. It actually extends into the peg box a little bit, which I'll clean up where you don't hardly notice it but I'm going to leave it pretty thick and you can see here the thickness of that patch it's a pretty good patch and with the grain going the opposite way I believe that's going to make that really strong and fix that whole area there so we're going to coat the little patch with glue okay we're going to clean this up and get a clamp on there this little uh, <clears throat> forceps uh, clamp uh, really seems to do the job. It gets right in there and, and I've got leather on the outside here. So I think that's a perfect clamp for that. We're going to let that set up at least an hour before I take the clamp off and then another hour before I try to drill the hole and string it up. The little patch has been glued in here for four or five hours now and I'm going to uh, trim it down as close to this original size here as possible. All right, we're going to do just a little touch up of filler, just a very light amount of filler in there, just to fill the little seam like. We're going to dye it all and make it look, and you really won't be even able to tell that it happened, I don't think. Got a little filler stick here to just to fill the little seam where I've blended the two pieces together. You can't hardly see the seam as it is, but, you know, I figure... 
the little filler there will just make it virtually invisible because we'll dye it. All right, we'll give that a few minutes to dry. We'll stain it up and we'll string this puppy up. While this is drying over here, I'm going to uh, put some felt underneath this chin rest so that when we put it on the instrument, it won't make leave big marks there. That's some stick on felt. It's already got a little bit of piece of felt on this bottom side here, and that's probably enough. You cannot tell it now, really even by looking in there, it's, it's in pretty darn good shape. The only thing you can see on the outside is just a very fine hairline crack right there. And if I could get that to die, that might not even show up. Alright, well before you can string it up, there's still one more thing at least that we have to do. These pegs don't have holes in them. What I do is I turn them flat like this. I put a pencil mark where I want the hole to be drilled. Now, the, my rule of thumb is, is I put the pencil mark about one third of the way towards the big end, towards this end. So I put it over here and like there's two thirds left. That way as you tighten it, it goes that way and the hole has plenty of room to travel. So it's very important, I think, that you get that hole in the right place. If you drill the hole close to the little end, well then your string is going to be running in through the little end hole. So it's very important, I think. So there we go, we got her roughly, roughly installed and now we'll start the detail tuning and adjustments. I just put the chin rest on using this little tool with the little end on it there and it sticks through these holes and you adjust and you tighten it righty tighty just like always. And the thing about that is, is when you get to the snug, you stop. In other words, you don't want it loose, but you, as soon as you can just feel tension, then you stop because you, you can bend these very easily and you can break this piece here. This Bakelite piece of plastic will break if you tighten it very tight. So you just snug tight and then, you know, and you go back and forth and you keep them even and then you get them very evenly snug tight and that's when you're done. Okay, before I start doing anything crazy and getting it all into tune and all that, I first check and make sure that the bridge is in the right place compared to the sound post and all that. Now let me first check 325 millimeters and if you can see right here, it is right on the money. Now the way you measure that is from the inside edge of your E string to the inside edge of the E string here at the bridge and it's 325 millimeters. Now, could you use a different number? Sure. I just have standardized on 325 over the years because that seems to line up with these uh, F-hole marks pretty closely on most violins. Some it doesn't, but I try to, you know, standardize on a, a, a set length because that's your scale. Uh, if you start moving this forwards or backwards, then your notes are sharp or they're flat. So. I just try to standardize it on a on a number, and 325 millimeters is what I've chosen, and it's pretty pretty good. It's pretty accurate. You could argue it either way, and 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 you know the further back you have it, the slightly deeper tone you have. Uh, so you know you don't want to get it too close, and you want to try to at least maintain that. And then you want your bridge to be very straight up and down this way. You don't want it canted forward, you don't want it canted backwards. You want to keep it straight up and down and when it's in that position then you look at your sound post and your sound post ought to be, and I'm just pointing it out, I mean everybody has a little different idea, your sound post ought to be about in here somewhere and uh, that's just a little bit behind this treble foot and just directly behind the treble foot basically. 
So it's in pretty good shape right now. I'm going to call that good enough, actually, and we'll go with that. Adjusting the sound post can make a difference in your tone for sure. You get it directly under the foot, it's going to be very harsh. So a little bit further back probably gives you a little bit woodier sound. You don't want your sound post in there so tight that it pushes the top up and wants to break the top. Some people put them in there incredibly tight and then, then they break their top. With all that said, let me tune this thing up and we'll bring you back. One more thing before I get to the actual tuning I should have mentioned is I like to get these strings separated. I like to have them spread across the bridge pretty good. You don't have to get them right out to the very edge, but you, you know, and you want to look at your fingerboard and make sure you've got fingerboard coverage there. But uh, you do want them a little bit wider. I think that spreads your, your tone out just a little bit. I think that's a good thing. And then, then what I do is I make a couple of marks on these two strings and then I check the other ones. Are they the same? Are they the same? And that's pretty darn close. And then you make adjustments from there. Once I get those strings where I'm satisfied, I make a mark on each side of the string with a pencil, a very sharp pencil. I, I go ahead and pull the bridge out and I take a three-cornered file from the back and just put a little indention, indention between those marks at each string. I don't make a very deep hole at all. Just, an, just a little mark to kind of help hold the string in that spot. Some strings will come with this little piece of plastic over this E string to keep the E string from cutting into the bridge too much. Some bridges will have an ebony insert there whatever you like, but I, if I do use this little plastic, I set it right on the, the back edge of the bridge so that the plastic doesn't, you know, extend beyond the front of the bridge. Well, there you have it. It is a nice fiddle. Uh, got her tuned up. She sounds real good. We got a brand new bow for it. It's a, uh, you know, it's got a Parisian eye type bow and uh, it's octagonal stick, little silver lining there, octagonal stick with real horse hair. Very nice bow for the money. I sell these bows for about, oh, $75 a piece, roughly. And then I've got a case here that I sell for roughly about 80 bucks a piece. The case is really nice too. It's a cheapy case, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say it's an expensive case. It's, it's actually a cheapy case. But for the money, you can't beat it. Um, it's, you know, you just can't beat it. It's got a lot of space for storage. And uh, it's just, it's velvet lined. It's got four bow holders here that you can maybe see. So you can put four bows in here. It's got a little hygrometer. Uh, little compartments up here too. So it's a real nice little case. Got the uh, cover here that goes in there. Uh, so we're going to put the fiddle in its new home for the very first time right now. Looks like a million dollars in there, don't it? And lay that over the top there. And we'll put the bow in there. It's going to fit, but it's a tight fit. I'm going to put it up there just because it's a little more flexible, I think, up there than it is down here at the hinge end. So it's in there. It's in there pretty tight. And I've got the hair loosened up on the bow. We can close this up. The latches on this are fairly cheap, but it does also have the zippered case, which if you take your time with these zippers, they last a long time. You can't get in a hurry with these zippers. They're, you know, they are inexpensive. Um, and then, but it's a pretty nicely protected old fiddle now. It's going to live on for at least another hundred years.
I believe this old fiddle's going to live on for at least another hundred years. Thanks for watching. Thank you.